The matching cubes algorithm is used to dynamically calculate a mesh. With that you can create organic looking surfaces like the meta balls. In this video we learn the algorithm and try it out with 3JS. 3JS does not provide an implementation of the algorithm, so you have to program it yourself. But luckily there are some examples of that, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. The idea of the algorithm is that you have a field of scalar values, which divide the space into a grid of cubes. Within the cube grid you polygonize the scalar field. Each cube has vertices, which have a scalar value assigned. That value can be different for each vertex and can change over time. And then there are edges, which connect the vertices. In the algorithm you iterate all cubes and determine if it is crossed by a surface. If it is crossed, then find the edges which are intersected by the surface and approximate the intersection points on those edges. And when you know the intersection points, you can then create triangles, which then can be used to render a mesh. So this way, cube by cube and triangle by triangle, you dynamically create a mesh. The algorithm is mostly based upon lookup tables, which make many things a lot easier. The algorithm has basically three steps, so this is how they work. Step 1. For each vertex of a cube, you compare the assigned value to an ISO level. That ISO level is a global user-defined constant and is the same for all cubes, while the values of all cube vertices can be different. If the value is below the ISO level, you set a bit into the cube index. The cube index is a bit field, where each bit tells if a certain vertex value is below the ISO level. Then we have step 2. You use the cube index to access the edges lookup table. That table returns another bit field, which tells which edges are affected. You see an example in the picture, where starting from the lowest bit on the right, the edges 2, 3 and 11 are intersected by the surface. You don't have to create the edges lookup table yourself, just copy paste it. And now knowing the edges, you can approximate the intersection points on those edges. For each edge, use the ISO level and the scalar value of both vertices which are connected by that edge and calculate a weight value. And then use the weight value to linear interpolate between the two vertices. Then you have the approximated intersection point on that edge. And at last we have step 3. Reuse the cube index for the triangles lookup table. This lookup table returns an array of edge indices. A series of three edge indices indicates that we have a triangle between those three edges. And because we have approximated the intersection points on those edges, we can use those points to draw a triangle. There are at most five triangle permutations possible within the cube. You also don't have to create the triangle lookup table by yourself, just copy paste it. And now knowing all the triangles for all cubes, we can use the 3JS buffer geometry to render a mesh. Now we need to populate the scalar field with values in order to create meta balls. We can approximate meta balls by using the Gaussian bell function. This function returns 1 if the input is 0 and quickly drops to 0 if the input moves away from 0. Knowing the center point and the radius of a ball and having a cube vertex point, we can calculate the distance of the vertex to the border of the meta ball and apply it to the Gaussian bell function. If the vertex is very close to the border of the meta ball, then the result will be very close to 1. The result quickly drops to zero if the vertex is further away from the border. Now imagine we have a two-dimensional scalar field and we would apply the bell function onto all vertices. We must pick an ISO level between zero and one because this is the result range of the Gaussian bell function. An ISO level of 0.5 is a good choice. If we have a meta ball on the right side of the field, there will be many scalar values close to zero because they are far away from the meta ball border. 
The vertices close to the border will have a value just below the ISO level or above the ISO level. So these vertices are scratching the meta ball surface. To make it easier to imagine that, this is how a plot of that particular example on a plane looks like. There are cubes where all scalar values are below the ISO level. That means there is no intersection on those cubes. And there are also some cubes where some values are below the ISO level and some values are above the ISO level. That means we have detected an intersection. Now imagine we would create a new meta ball next to the already existing. This is how it would look like on a flat plane. And this would create new intersection points next to the second meta ball and also between the two meta balls. So this is how the meta balls connect and merge into a single blob. The code which I show you here is heavily based upon the example which you see here. I will go through it step by step. As you can see, I have the edge and triangles lookup tables. Just need to copy paste them. Then I need to have the grid resolution. Here I choose 30, so we have 30 times 30 times 30 cubes in the 3D space. Then I have a scale value with 10, so my cube space is 10 on the x, y and z axis. And then I set the ISO level to 0.5, which is fine for the meta balls example. And then I have an array of values and an array of points. These are the cube vertices and their assigned scalar values. I scatter the points uniformly across the whole space and initialize the values with 0. Then we must create a function where the marching cubes algorithm is executed. This function will be called every frame. At first, within the function, we make sure to reset all the scalar values to zero, because our meta balls will be moving around and these values must be recalculated every frame. After that, we will calculate the scalar values by applying the meta balls function. We get to that later. Next, we create some temporary variables. One will contain the found intersection points. And another one will contain the whole list of found triangle points. This one will be applied to the 3GS buffer geometry. After that, we create three nested loops. With this nested loop, we iterate all cubes. So this algorithm is very slow. Depending on the resolution, it may take much time to calculate everything every frame. So watch out for that. Within the loop, determine the vertices of the cube. And also determine the scalar values of each vertex. And then calculate the previously mentioned cube index. After that, use it to look up the edges from the edges lookup table. If the result is zero, that means no intersection, then we can just skip the cube. Knowing we have an intersection in this cube, we determine the intersection points. Via a bunch of if cases, check which edge is affected. Then knowing which vertices you must lerp to get the approximated intersection point. And then use the cube index again to access the triangles lookup table. A sequence of three edge indices tells you which of the previously calculated intersection points create a triangle. Push these triangle points into the global triangle points array. After all cubes have been iterated, this array contains all triangle points.
Before we run this algorithm, we should create an array of meta balls. Each ball has a center point and a radius. In the marching cubes function, after resetting the values, then we apply the previously discussed Gaussian bell function onto the vertex values. Just make sure to add the value and not to replace it. And finally, we should create a buffer geometry. I create an array of vertices, it has a fixed size, so I have to be careful to not exceed it. This array will be reused by the buffer geometry. Create a buffer geometry with buffer attributes, a mesh using the buffer geometry and the material of your choice. Then create a function to update the buffer geometry, given the list of triangle points. Replace the values within the reused vertices array with the values of the triangles. And then update the buffer geometry and make sure to set the draw range so it draws only the current triangles and not more. And don't forget to add the mesh to the scene. Then in the render loop call the marching cubes function. And after that call the function with the new triangle points to update the buffer geometry. So we have successfully rendered the balls using the marching cubes algorithm. Maybe then animate a ball to make the balls split and merge into blobs. You can try out different approximation functions than the meta ball one to create different kind of organic looking shapes. That's it with the video. Thanks for watching.